So yeah, so I mean, you say like, that this is this is the part that I'll I'll be honest. Let's talk away from business and just personally, implementing things into my routine super difficult for me. It takes me time to warm up. So you we sit here and you say these are gold. Every one of these people is gold. You need to spend a lot of time on them. I still compartmentalize and say it's not. I'm not going to put all my time into this because it's not producing anything. So I'm I'm not. They're not top priority to me right now. Mm -hmm. So obviously that needs to change. But it's taking me time to get into the system that I'm in now. You know what I mean? So obviously that's a, you know, probably not the best trait that I just like take things and run with it straight off the bat. It's not that I'm not putting in work, just not like, you know, really giving them 110% like I'm going to make this work. I have not had that mindset, I'll be honest. Probably because, you know, we sit here and talk about how it's a percentage of games and you know, some of them will turn good, some of them won't. So I automatically take that and probably just think in my head, like, okay, well, if they turn out, then they're good. If they don't, then they won't. But I'm not going to, you know, really put all the effort in. But I don't know. That's just. You're thinking like a real solution. Like what's worth the time based on the re return. You have too many job roles and responsibilities. You have to prioritize your time for money conversations. If the money conversation isn't there, you're not willing to have it because you got too much other stuff to do. You got a family. Yeah. Get married. Yeah. You got friends. Yes. You're trying to maintain a social life. So I mean, what do you say to that? Fuck that. Put more time in because all I care about is family and work. That's what I'm supposed to care about. I'm I mean, I don't think that I don't have enough time. I, I think it's just I'm trying to get a rhythm of it. Are, or are not spending enough time on it. Um, what you just communicated to me is that you have a challenge with your identity. You believe that you are one way. So I've said it like 15 times today. Mm -hmm. The answer is who, not how. I know you have a challenge with your identity. So when you look at your family, when you look at your faith, when you look at your friends, when you look at your business, when you look at your finances, you have identities around all of these core topics in your life. Mm -hmm. Versions of Pat that exist in these moments. Yeah. Yeah. And when you go from friend Pat to husband Pat, it's different. And when you go from husband Pat to real estate agent Pat, different guy. Mm-hmm. And so you're not struggling with the act of doing any one of these things. You're more than capable of doing them all. And you're struggling with your identity, with who you believe that you are in that moment. Mm -hmm. You just sat here and said it. You just sat here and told me exactly. It's how to figure it out. Repetition? No, it's, Is that it's what you're being at? extremely intentional. It's, it's sitting down away from this, away from this. And saying, who do I need to be in order to have success with my faith, with my family, with my fitness, with my finances, with my business? And we gave you a couple traits, right? You need discipline, consistency. Those are not things you are practicing. Right. Um, that's, that's loud, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the the answer to the question is who not how it's sitting down in a journal and writing down who does pat need to be to be successful at lead generation and you create a version of it one of my favorite quotes like i've been a quote junkie for like a decade one of my favorite quotes to this day is still from tony robbins he said i i made this guy i built this tony robbins motherfucker like you can mold yourself into whatever it is that you want to be. And that's one of the most powerful things I've ever learned in my entire life is at any moment I could change my identity and I could become anything that I wanted. Mm. You have the same superpower, but it takes a ton of intention, a ton of very intentional thought, which is why routines are important, which is why ha good habits and rituals are really important because you're not the sum of your thoughts. You're the sum of the actions that you take every single day. And those things will compound over time. So if you want to have a great relationship with your spouse, future spouse, 
you want to be a good dad, uh, you want to be a good business person, you want to have great health, you got to really sit down and be very intentional. What do you think about the feud going on between EXP and Keller Williams? I, <laughs> I am actually very fascinated by what's happening and it's not something that you commonly see. So before I give my actual opinion on this, I should probably preface this and say like, I have more respect for Gary Keller and Glenn Sanford. I think they've done significantly more for the real estate industry than most people like ever. <laughs> so somebody at EXP could be upset or somebody at KW might be upset by my opinion, but I think personally, if you don't know what's happened, EXP has uh, hired or intends to hire Mark Willis, who was um, an executive at Keller Williams, helped grow it from 70 to 150,000 agents or something like that. And he's been uh, away from the company since 2014 or 2015. And so EXP is trying to hire them. Gary Keller steps in and blocks it, essentially with an order or a restraining order, if I'm not mistaken, and the judge issued temporarily in their favor to stay what's happening. I think it was not a, I don't, I don't think it was a very smart move. And on Gary Keller's part, and again, this is a man I have immense respect for, but I've only seen him really like make some mistakes two times specific to ESP. One was on a stage at Inman, and uh, then there's this one. I think that EXP was and is today positioned to grow like in a phenomenal fashion. They've proven that. A company to go from like 13,000 agents to 74, whatever they are today, in three to four years is insane. But I unfortunately think that Gary Keller just fast-tracked the growth that EXP has and the trajectory that they're on by stepping in and in my opinion, misstepping in and trying to block this. Cause I don't think that it's gonna ultimately land in Keller Williams favor. I could totally be wrong. I'm not sitting in the rooms where they're having those discussions. It's just pure speculation and opinion. But what it does communicate is an outright, I would say fear for where EXP is headed and what they're going to accomplish. I think he just accelerated EXP's growth in a pretty big fashion. And I think that they're not far from taking over as one of the top, like the number one brokerage in the world. Again, I say these things with the deepest respect for Gary Keller and Keller Williams. I have so many friends and so many clients in that organization. I think they're all wonderful people. And I remain very brand agnostic. I, I, I clients all over the world, so many different types of brokerages. We have over 1300 clients, real estate companies that we work with now. Like I love them all, but I can't help but feel that this was a huge misstep, unfortunately, that I don't think out it's going to work out in, in, in Keller's favor and, you know, could be wrong. Like I said, I'm not sitting in the rooms where they're having these conversations, but I think it was a, it was a big misstep and I'm very interested to see how it's going to play out. Okay. Our calls and our conversations must have structure. So draw a line straight down the center of your circle and on the right half, write winning a friend. Okay, the first half of every sales interaction that you have must be about winning a friend. You should not forget that this is a relationship-based business. Everybody says it's speed to lead, it's actually speed to relationship. Because the average uh, lead generated in the real estate space is shared with statistically, guess how many people? Nine agents to one lead. 2018, I think, or 19, they released stats, 86 million leads generated. How many transactions? I think it was like five or six million, okay? So you guys are getting contacts. They are be sh they're being shared with other people. This is why video content is so crucial, and that's not what my presentation's about today, but you must listen to this woman that is leading you, okay? Create video content. But <clears throat> when we get into a conversation with somebody, We've got to care more about the relationship than we do the transaction. Because if you're just fighting for transactions, I see agents making this mistake all the time, what's going to happen is you're going to get a transaction, and then it's over. But if you get a relationship, you're going to get many transactions. Different mindset. So the first half of your conversation is winning a friend. 
asking really good questions, understanding their core motivations, understanding their pain points. And I'm gonna dive into why that's important in a little bit. Second part of the conversation. So you, you wrote a line through the first uh, half of the circle. Now uh, kick a line out to nine o'clock, okay? The next part of your conversation, the next 30-ish percent of your conversation is all about adding value, okay? In sales, people make decisions with emotion and they validate those decisions with logic. They make decisions with emotion and they validate those decisions with logic. Some of you are making this terrible mistake of putting out posts on Facebook like, just sold this house for $20,000 over asking in seven days. Yay me. <laughs> and that's not what my presentation's about today, but I can, I can do a grant rant on that maybe at some point and we can talk about it. But um, the reason people keep doing this is because people are making decisions to do business with you because you have an emotional connection, a relationship. But when their friends ask why they decided to hire you, they say, well, so-and-so just sold this house for seven days, 20,000 over asking, because they're not in emotional rapport with the person asking the question, what they're in with you, whenever they decide to do business with you. When you uncover somebody's pain and you under, understand their problem and you help them work aggressively to achieve their core motivation, whatever it is, that's emotional, okay? So the reason agents keep making posts like this is because that's what clients are saying. Well, I chose them because of X, Y, Z. I chose them because of their stats. No, they chose you because of the relationship, the emotional connection, which is very important. So you want to get somebody into a specific state in a conversation. You do that whenever you're, adding, uh, whenever you're winning a friend. They communicate what their challenges are to you. And so when you're adding value, a lot of very core sales principles teach us you wanna break down the wrong beliefs and rebuild them up with the right beliefs. An example, very, very silly example of this, uh, I believe I need to put 20% down. That's a wrong belief in some cases, right? So that's a chance for you actually to correct. So when you're adding value in a conversation, what you're doing is you're breaking down some of the uh, misinformation maybe they have, right? They don't have the right belief about challenges, whether it's down payment or it's listing their property or an agent didn't market it the right way. Speaking of which, does Krista do a hell of a job teaching you all how to market property to sell? Can we get a hell yes on that one? There we go. And so <clears throat> it's very important that you start adding value. So we just got done speaking at uh, Krista Mayshore's Community Market Leader live event incredible events um, all the way around but what I was so fascinated by was just Krista's ability to uh, hold energy to maintain you know the room to, to connect and you could just always tell when somebody is a true like master of what it is that they do but what I also found really fascinating is that she kept telling everybody how she did it. Like she kept giving away all of her secrets and I spoke and there were a lot of other really cool people that spoke and there were very similar commonalities in all of them. A hundred percent of the people talked about, uh, you know, going all in and investing in yourself. I had many short stories that I shared about, you know, my, me investing in mentors and coaches and stuff like that. And she had talked about how much she's invested and, you know, her, more and more people kind of dive into that. When you're trying to get to the next level, like whatever that is in your life, you got to find people that have been where you want to go and just invest in them, invest in their resources. There's a lot of people out there that have all the arrows in their back already. And we just live in such a unique time where you can go access the information that you need to get yourself to the next level whatever that looks like. I've got coaches in so many different areas of my life. Some I pay, uh, you know, a little bit. Some I pay a whole lot. Coaches, I pay $1,000 to talk to me for 20 minutes. And so and just go all in. If you're trying to get to the next level, invest in yourself. Whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, there's likely somebody that has been there and can help get you through whatever it is that you might be facing today. And I heard this quote uh, a few months back in an event. The guy said, you want to imitate before you innovate. And it's so true in this industry and so many others is there's so many people that have had so much success just imitate what they've done 
and usually if you call them they'll let you like they're they're willing to help you and then start to innovate and grow and um, you know evolve the the processes you develop and the success you have into something uh, greater maybe even greater than you ever imagined but if you're trying to get to the next level right now go all in and invest in yourself get uh, the right people around you get in the right rooms take in good advice and most importantly like everybody in there is just take massive action. Thank <laughs> you.